Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Luke chapter 6 from the New Testament Jesus was going through the grain fields on a Sabbath, and his disciples picked some heads of wheat, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is against the law on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? How he entered the house of God, took and ate the sacred bread, which is not lawful for any to eat but the priest alone, and gave it to his companions? Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. Now a man was there whose right hand was withered. The experts in the law and the Pharisees watched Jesus closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath so that they could find a reason to accuse him. But he knew their thoughts, and said to the man who had the withered hand, Get up and stand here. So he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath, or to do evil, to save a life, or to destroy it? After looking around at them all, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. The man did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with mindless rage and began debating with one another what they would do to Jesus. Now it was during this time that Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent all night in prayer to God. When morning came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Then he came down with them and stood on a level place, and a large number of his disciples had gathered along with a vast multitude from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. They came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, and those who suffered from unclean spirits were cured. The whole crowd was trying to touch him because power was coming out from him and healing them all. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God belongs to you. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and insult you and reject you as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and jump for joy, because your reward is great in heaven. For their ancestors did the same things to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your comfort already. Woe to you who are well satisfied with food now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laughs now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for their ancestors did the same things to the false prophets. But I say to you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other as well. And from the person who takes away your coat, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks you, and do not ask for your possessions back from the person who takes them away. Treat others in the same way that you would want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to be repaid, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners so that they may be repaid in full. But love your enemies, and do good and lend, expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to ungrateful and evil people. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, 
running over will be poured into your lap, for the measure you use will be the measure you receive. He also told them a parable. Someone who is blind cannot lead another who is blind. Can he? Won't they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not greater than his teacher, but everyone when fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye but fail to see the beam of wood in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, while you yourself don't see the beam in your own? You hypocrite! First remove the beam from your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from brambles. The good person out of the good treasury of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasury produces evil, for his mouth speaks from what fills his heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on bedrock. When a flood came, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it, because it had been well built. But the person who hears and does not put my words into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against that house, it collapsed immediately and was utterly destroyed. God, I think it's interesting to think about when your son picked out his disciples. He went to you and he prayed about it all night, asking for your guidance in helping pick these very important 12 people who he was going to train and then send out to do the work that he was sent here to earth to do to talk about you and your church. And first, well, first when I read that, I was thinking about how many decisions do we really take to you? You say pray about everything. I think we pick and choose what we pray about. We make decisions that we think we're good to go with, and only when we get ourselves in a little bit of trouble <laughs> do we come running back to you. Or maybe, maybe that's just me. Um, but then as I thought about it more, and, and I totally realize we're talking about your son here, not just... Uh, common human but your answer to him because I know he would be obedient to what you ask him to do your answer to him were the 12 we just read their names including Judas Iscariot you had him pick those 12 and you knew full well that Judas Iscariot would eventually betray him and would lead to his death required death for our salvation. And although that gets into very deep theological discussions about the Son of God and obedience and knowing ahead of time and not knowing and all sorts of very interesting things, but I think about it with our own lives that Further down, you say, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I tell you? And I think about that, because when we pray and you hand us our answer, <laughs> maybe we choose the 11 that makes sense and the 12th one that doesn't make sense to us in the slightest, we tend to leave out. We, we don't do what you tell us to do. You do answer us, and it may not be the answer we're looking for, so we don't see it. Or it may not be the answer we're looking for, so we ignore it. And we continue to wait for our answer that we want. But I think going back to your, to your son, to Jesus, and when he prayed, he got his answer. And it was all 12, including the person that would eventually lead him into his murderer's hands. So I ask today, God, that when we call out to you, Lord, Lord, and you tell us what to do, which right then and there is such an incredible blessing that you offer us so much guidance, 
that we would not only come to you and ask for help in all things, pray about everything. We would listen to your words and not have a preconceived idea of what it is that we want to hear or what we're expecting to hear. And then when the answer comes that we put it into practice, verse 47, everyone who comes to me praying about everything, listens to my words, hears what I tell them, not what they want to hear, and puts them into practice, actually accepts them and uses them in their life. Builds that life with a foundation that storms can't shift my foundation. Storms can't destroy me. Storms can't blow me away. They can't cause me to collapse. They can't destroy me. Help us with that, God. It's hard for it's hard for us, and I know you know that. As humans, we're so determined to be independent and do things our own way, and and not be dependent upon you, which is exactly what you've called us to do. Today, allow us to put our control up on the shelf. Allow us to put our preconceived notions of those answers to the prayers. Maybe today teach us a new prayer that simply, I not only want my will to be what you willed, God, but I also want to be okay with it. I want to be accepting of it. I want to be joyful when that answer comes, no matter what that answer is. Thank you, God, for your guidance, for your patience with us, and for teaching us so much to come to you, to listen to you, and then to put it into practice because you always, always, 100% of the time, always want what, want what is best for us. Because you love us with a love that we will never fully comprehend. In your son's name we pray. Amen.